What's up guys, we're out here in Flagstaff. We're less than four weeks away from my next marathon. So for those of you who don't know, Flagstaff is one of the best places in the US to train. In my opinion, it's actually the number one place to train. I just finished my first week in Flagstaff and uh, it's been pretty tough so far. It sits at 7,000 feet altitude and has thousands and thousands of miles of running trails and uh, you know, just places to run fast. Now a big question I get is why I drive all the way to Flagstaff right before my big marathon. And that's because I'm going all in on this marathon build. I mean it's potentially my last shot at trying to qualify so I gotta make sure I'm doing everything right. With the altitude, the miles of uh, soft surface to run on, and my coach actually living here in Flagstaff, it's no brainer for me to come here. So I have been to Flagstaff twice before so I knew it would be a good training environment for me. My coach's name is Rory Linkletter. We're actually on the same high school team, we're on the same college team. He lives out here, he's a professional athlete for Puma, and he's kind of been training me this past year. I've worked out here three times, and I can tell you it has made a big difference in my training. Having the person there who actually wrote the workouts for you kind of helps just keeps you accountable, keeps you focused, and just gets you kind of more excited. Next biggest question I always get is, does altitude make that big of a difference? In Utah, I set out about 4,500 feet, and Flagstaff is about 7,000 feet altitude. Now, Utah's a great place to train. It's where I've actually done most of my running in the past, and from what I can tell right away, the answer is yes. My assumption coming up here is that since I've been at altitude my whole entire life, that the altitude wouldn't be that big of a difference. My first workout here was a 22 mile long run with two four mile tempos mixed in there and it did not feel good. Obviously the paces that I were running were much harder. Even the slower paces I noticed I wasn't recovering as quickly as I normally do. Now all that was to be expected, but I will say I'm surprised at also how quickly I have adjusted. I had a workout just a couple days ago that was four by three mile and it actually went pretty well. Every day the altitude seems to become a little bit more manageable for me and I'm thinking that because I've always been at altitude that my body is quickly adjusting to the 7,000 feet. They say all you need is 21 days to get the blood benefits of altitude, which is you know increased red blood cells, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna be here for a little over 30 days, so I'm hoping that this will kind of give me a boost as well. I do get back to Utah a week before my marathon, so I'll have a couple days to relax, rejuvenate in Utah, and then I'm heading straight out to New York. Another thing people ask me about is my schedule. How am I able to come to Flagstaff for a month when I have to work? Luckily, my new remote job is extremely flexible, and so I rented out an Airbnb. And I just get to do all my work from here. But my wife, unfortunately, does not have a remote job. So she is not here. She's coming up next week and she'll be here for the last two weeks of my stay, so I'm super excited about that as well. I also kind of want to do a little check-in on how my mileage workouts and how I've been feeling. So my previous builds, my highest mileage has been 100, um, but I've never really stuck at that consistently. My average mileage for my first build at CIM was honestly 85. My next weekly average mileage for the Grandma's Marathon was 90, 95. And for this one, I'm hoping to honestly average close to 100. Last week I hit 98 miles, the week before that I hit 100. And I think the week before that I was at 95. So next week I'm hoping to hit anywhere from 105 to 110. That will hopefully be about my peak. Um, it's safe to say that this is my highest mileage build so far for the marathon. During my best season in college, I ran 95 miles per week and that's when I was training for the 5K and the steeplechase. So honestly, it makes sense that when you're training for a longer distance that you should go up in mileage anyways. Now I am being super careful while up here in Flagstaff because the altitude is an extra stimulus. I'm trying really hard to listen to my body and prioritize recovering. The main things I've been doing to make sure that I'm recovering okay is sleeping a ton and eating a lot, a lot of food. Um, yeah. <laughs> For workouts, I've worked out three times here so far. Two of them were big marathon workouts and one of them was kind of a track session to uh, get the legs spinning a little bit. As I mentioned before, my first workout here was a 22 mile long run with four mile tempo sandwiched in between. The tempos were supposed to be at marathon effort. Um, I was hoping to run 515s, but I ended up running 520s. That's kind of the effort we were going for. It felt really hard to be honest with you, especially that last four mile tempo. You know, that's kind of what you gotta get used to is is running fast even when you're tired, right? So my next workout that I did was 12 by 200 with 200 meters jog recovery. I averaged like 30 seconds on those. I did it on the NAU track and it was kind of just spinning the legs over from the long travel that I did and the big workout that I did just a couple days prior. 
The next workout that I did was four by three mile repeats. And the goal was to do as many as I could without working too hard. My coach is being super cognizant of how I'm feeling and kind of the strain that's stacking up on my body. So he wanted me to make sure that I left this workout with a little something in the tank. And honestly, it went pretty good. My splits ended up being 1537, 1536, 1525, and then 1536 to finish it off um, with four, which is pretty good. I was honestly hoping to get through three, maybe four if I was feeling good. So it's nice that I was able to get all four in. So workouts and mileage are going extremely well. And my main focus is just making sure I recover. And before I end the video, I'm going to do a quick Q and A from questions I asked for on my Instagram last week. How did me and my wife, Mika me? Um, for those of you guys who don't know, Mika, she is my wife. She is a runner. She also ran D1 um, at Utah State University. It's actually about two hours away from BYU. And we dated all through college. And we actually dated a little bit through high school as well. So. Yeah, we're high school sweethearts. We met on our cross country team, both runners on the team. The rest of that is history. We dated for six years before getting engaged last year, and we've been married for about a year now. So she just graduated from Utah State actually, and she is starting her own professional running career as well. What is the hardest workout I have ever done? The hardest workout that we do at BYU is called the Michigan. Basically it's a mile breakdown. So it's, you do a 1600, a 1200, 800, 400, except between everything on the track, you do a mile tempo out on the grass, right? So it'll be 1600 on the track, followed by a temple mile, and then 1200 on the track, followed by a temple mile, all the way down until you do a 400, finish off with a temple mile. So my splits for my best Michigan, trust me, I had a lot of bad Michigans where I would have to drop out, but my best Michigan was 427 for the track mile, followed by a 450, then 320 for the 1200, followed by a 452 for the tempo mile, uh, 211 for the 800, followed by a 448 for the tempo mile, 62 for the 400, 447 for the last tempo mile. You get about, coach says 90 seconds, but he's probably giving us more like two minutes, over two minutes or whatever, but yeah, I do not miss doing that workout at all. Does Mika or I make money from running? Are we sponsored? No, we are not sponsored. We are just doing this out of the love and passion of our hearts. Would we take money in a sponsorship if we could? Absolutely. I mean, I already am thinking about quitting my job for reals. And I don't know if I'm good enough to make money from running, but I think Mika actually kind of has a shot at it. So I'm going to be supporting her as best I can because who knows, she could be paying the bills with her running. Have I had any major injuries? And to be honest, the answer is no. I've had no major injuries, knock on wood. I've never had any stress fractures or reactions, anything like that, luckily. And then my main injury that I had during college was just Achilles tendonitis. I would get it randomly throughout the year sometimes, and I never really had to take off a lot of time for it. So I'm pretty lucky, pretty blessed to be pretty robust and, and um, not injury prone because I know that there's a lot of runners out there who suffer from injuries a lot. To be honest with you, I wish I had all the answers. Running in itself is hard, and trying to become fitter than you ever have is also a very hard thing. Doing that while also working a job or having kids is a lot. So my biggest thing is not to force anything. I think a lot of times people try and get into that grind mentality, and I love that mentality, trust me. It gets me out of bed in the morning and it gets me focused and ready to roll, but I think you also have to remember to have a little bit of self-acceptance and self-love and you know, if you fall short some days, don't freak out about it. Don't, you don't need to hate yourself because you missed a run, right? Just realize that missing that run might actually help you in the long run um, stay mentally engaged with whatever you're trying to do, so. And try not to take things too seriously because I mean, at the end of the day, it's just running. How did my mileage go from senior year of high school, freshman year of college, and where did I end up senior year of college as well? In high school, my peak mileage was 45 miles per week. My first year in college, however, I had to actually walk on to the BYU team, so I had to be good enough to get a spot on the team. So I went from 45 to 70 miles per week in one summer. I would not recommend it. I really believe the only reason why I got through that injury free is because I would go to practice, I'd come home, and I'd just nap for the whole rest of the day. So I was sleeping a ton. Every year after that, I would go up about 10 miles. So the next year I was at 80, the year after that I was at 90, um, and then I peaked off at 95 to 100 miles per week. 
The real thing with mileage is finding your own sweet spot. I think it depends on the event you're running and where you can stay healthy at. All right, guys, that's all I got in terms of questions. If you have more questions, comment down below and I'll try my best to get to those in the next few videos. I'm super excited to be here in Flagstaff and kind of show you guys what it's like to run here. Four weeks out for my marathon, two more hard weeks, two taper weeks, and then we are getting after it in New York. Thank you guys for watching.